Hello, and welcome to Let My People Eat, a podcast that provides satisfying talk about kosher nutrition. Here we clear through the clutter of nutrition speak, arm you with the clarity and confidence to eat, feel, and be your healthiest every day. I am Jill Scharfman, a board-certified holistic nutritionist living in Los Angeles, and with me is Dr. Andrea Moskowitz. Hi, I'm Dr. Andrea Moskowitz, and I'm a neuroscientist and psychiatrist. I use my training and experience to integrate positive lifestyle changes into my patients' lives. Hey, Andrea. Hey, Jill. How's it going? It's going well, though. It is hot here in LA right now. I know. The last two weekends have really been blistering. So I have a fun fact for you. Okay. Okay. What makes up at least 50% of our body weight? 50% of my body weight would be sugar and spice and everything nice. Oh, lovely. (laughs) But no, 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 (laughs) not that. And it's not muscle. It's not bone. It's water. Water is over 50%, actually 55 to 75%, depending on your age and wow. other factors. That's a lot. That is a lot. And you know what? We need it for every organ and every structure in our bodies. Right. Water transports nutrients and oxygen. It lubricates our joints. It regulates body temperature. It is very important. So much so that 1% to 2% of drop in hydration can affect our cognitive ability dramatically. And I know this because my daughter... The, last week, she took a yoga class, an hour and a half yoga class, uh-huh. and she was so dehydrated after, for the next day or two, it, until she was able to replenish her water supply. Wow. She was tired, lethargic. Um, you know, she just wasn't herself. And, you know, we made sure she drank plenty, plenty of water. She, we gave her electrolytes, and she's doing much better now. But oh, good. Yeah, you have to really, when it's so hot outside, you have to be so careful to make sure you are drinking enough water. Right. And, you know, although the average adult actually could go weeks without eating. Okay, it wouldn't be so much fun, but we could do it. Um, even in ideal circumstances, so what I'm saying, the temperature is comfortable, you're not running around, you're not doing crazy yoga classes, <laughs> no medical problems, right? We can't go more than tops, like five to six days without drinking, and it would be really miserable. And at the end of that, our organs would not be functioning, especially like our kidneys. Right. So would not be functioning. How much water should we be drinking, let's say, a regular day when the, excuse me, the temperature isn't crazy versus when we have to hydrate before we participate in sports? Okay, well, actually... There's really no clear guidelines. Like you hear, you know, the famous thing, you know, eight, eight ounce glasses a day. Right. Which is probably actually a good start. Um, but there's no hard and fast rules. So it depends on your age. It depends, as you said, on activity level. It depends on the climate where you live. It depends if you have any acute or chronic illnesses. For example, if you have a fever from the flu, you need to take in more water. If you have a urinary tract infection, you should be taking in more water. If you have heart problems, though, less water. Ah. So um, it just depends. And not all of our water is from water. Um, you, don't, is, you don't have to drink. You don't necessarily have to drink it as plain water. As a liquid. As a liquid. Um, you, depending on what you eat, you can get a lot of water in from fruits and vegetables. Um, the things that are highest in water are leafy vegetables, melons, strawberries, um, zucchini, uh, mushrooms, but a, those are the highest. Those are like over 90% water. So those contribute to our water allocation for the day. Exactly. As okay. does soups, as does if you, even if you eat yogurt, part of that is water, um, drinking milk. Um, you know, there's many, many other sources for water that all kind of go in together. Although I would say a good base, again, is probably of the water that you can see, right? Um, you know, without any other physical exertion, six to eight glasses. Right. So the number I've glasses. heard is like 50, around 50% of your body weight in ounces every day. So somebody who weighs like 130 pounds should drink somewhere around 50 to 60 ounces a day just to keep hydrated. Right. Which is about what I 
Right. Yeah. So, and a good way, you know, that you know if you're hydrated or not so, is when you go to the bathroom. Right. You can check the color of your urine and right. see if it's dark. That means you need to hydrate more. If it's pale, then you're probably in a right. good place. So, right. except if you're taking a lot of vitamins. Mm -hmm. So, if you're taking a lot of vitamins, your urine is going to look darker or neon yellow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so that's that's the difference with that. But you're right, especially to look at um, yeah your urine during the day. Right. Okay. So now we're saying drink water, but it's not really that simple. There are many there are types of water to drink, uh, ways to carry our water around. Right. And they're not all the same. You know, tap water is of course the easiest way for us to get our water, but a lot of county tap water it has contaminants or chlorine and we need to be careful with that right and we also don't want to be carrying our water around in plastic water bottles for many different reasons right so so what do we do with with tap water so what we can do with tap water so you know first of all it does depend on your county mm -hmm. where you live there are some waters that are quite good right okay um you can probably call your local water department of water and power and find out right you know or look it up online etc um but like for example in los angeles there's a lot of chlorine in the water mm -hmm. it used to be you could actually smell it all the time wow which is not a, never a good sign if you can smell the chlorine in your drinking water and it's also really not appealing right so um the best the best thing you know we'll start with that is to have like an inline filtration system on your on, on your, your sink water on your sink water right? right so that you can it goes through a filter and it filters out a lot of contaminants, contaminants. um also too if there's ever a problem with the water system it can for a while filter out uh bacteria and you know other things you don't want in your water right in your drinking water um so that's like the first so you should use that for your drinking water, and we would recommend filling up your water bottles using either stainless steel or glass, not right. using plastic. You can also use it. We use it for cooking. Right. So if I'm cooking soup or pasta or boiling potatoes and I right. need water, I use my filtered water. We also right. have um, filters on our showers, individual, right. because as we all know, the skin is the largest organ, and if there's anything damaging in your water supply, your skin is going to absorb that. Right. So, um, okay. you know, these things vary in prices. You can get your uh, inexpensive pitcher, water pitcher that will filter out a, right. a lot. Like a Brita. Right, right, like a Brita. Or you can do it under the sink, which is a little bit more pricey. And generally somebody has to come and install it. But right. once it's in, you know, you have to change the filters every six months. But right. it does a really good job and, and delivers you clean right. water. And it does pay for itself. Yeah. Because those filters are not so expensive. Those Right. The ones under the sink, are, they're not so expensive right. to replace. So here, I'll, I'll give you an example. So Aquafina, so a half liter of that sells for about $1.39. We looked at a convenience store in Tucson. The water in the bottle, Aquafina, is not well water or spring no. water. It's purified tap water. Right. So what you're doing is water that you could get in Tucson for 6.4 gallons out of your tap for a penny. Right. You are actually paying... A dollar thirty nine for half a liter, which right. makes Aquafina seven thousand times more expensive than get, just getting the water out of your tap. Right, and you're really not getting any benefit. Right, and it's in plastic bottles. Usually, it's in plastic bottles, which so, is a problematic. Right, especially you know, I was going to say the thing with the bottles. Yes, you know, probably the really hard plastic ones that say no BPA. Mm -hmm. Those are probably okay. Okay, I mean, I wouldn't free. You cannot freeze in them. That's one of the big no nos with. Water in bottles. Do not freeze it what, what in the that? bottle because when it's um, when it's coming back to room temperature, so there's toxins in the plastic. Mm -hmm. They're called phthalates. Okay. Okay. And they've been linked to cancer and other health problems. And once the plastic and they're used to soften plastic, so really the harder the plastic is, the less they have in it. So those really soft bottles, mm -hmm. the ones that you like. You know, as you're drinking it, they're collapsing on you. Right, right. Um, those are the worst. Okay. Those have the highest content because, of the soft one, of the softeners in it. That then leaches into the water that you're drinking. That then leaches into the water you're drinking as the water comes. If the water gets warmer mm -hmm. 
or it comes back to room temperature from being frozen. Mm-hmm. Also, the freezing can do like micro cracks in that kind of plastic, or in, and then that sort of leaches things out. And, and those those chemicals that leach into our water that we're drinking on a daily basis affects hormones. What else? What What are the negative linked effects? To, um, cancers linked to a, a, a potentially linked to a number of of medical problems, fertility problems, mm-hmm. et cetera. Okay. And so we don't want to take those in. Do you know what the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you d- describe <laughs> okay. the Great Pacific Garbage Patch? So there's actually a drifting island of garbage in the Pacific Ocean that right. goes from coastal California to Hawaii and then goes again until Japan. And this is a massive floating dump, primarily plastic bags right. and water bottles. Right. And it's going to stay like that for decades because plastic is not dio- biodegradable. I mean, for centuries. For centuries, eons. yes. And unfortunately, <laughs> animals ingest the water bottles right. or the plastics. And, or get caught in them. Yeah, and get caught. Remember, they used to have the uh, plastic rings that right. you would get your soda cans and they got rid of those because right. those uh, the, the animals would get stuck in that. So um, there's this great big garbage patch that's just sitting there primarily composed of water bottles. So really, we want to reduce the number of water bottles. They're not really healthy for us, and they're not really healthy for the environment. And if you have to kind of grab water on the go, because, you know, all of us at some time get caught out. We're out, we didn't take enough water, we forgot our water bottle, etc. I have noticed recently, and I think they probably are better for the environment in the long run, although they do have a tiny bit of plastic in them, there's these things that look like milk cartons. Right. Okay. And they're packaging water in it. Right. So it is more like a cardboard wax. Cause it's, it's like a milk carton. So the only piece of plastic is that little spout. Mm. So that is more biodegradable. So a better option to kind of yeah. stick with that aseptic type of packaging right. rather and, than plastic. And in terms of the environment, because the reason I know this, right, is because I was at an art exhibit this weekend mm-hmm. and it was so hot and it was kind of outside and they handed all of us, if we wanted, these um, cartons of water. Yeah. So I was just reading it going home because my husband was driving and I was bored. And so I was reading it and it said that the way they ship that, it's, it's not only better for the environment because it biodegrades better. But it's also better because when they ship these things, they're produced in certain plants and then they're shipped more locally. They ship them flat. So they take up a lot less room and it uses up a lot less energy to transport them. And then they're filled locally. Right. Okay. So there's a smaller carbon footprint. There's a smaller carbon footprint. Because I know uh, one of my favorite waters is from like the Tahitian Islands and I can only imagine. Oh, dear. (laughs) (laughs) How long then far it is to get that water to me. Um, Okay. okay, So water is our best option. That's all we need to drink. We always should be drinking. But there are obviously other beverages. Right. So because sometimes you just get tired of plain water. Right. You want something a little more special. So um, I have a question here from Maddie. Okay. Maddie writes, I have a really bad diet soda habit, and I drink four to five a day. When I try to cut it out of my diet in the past, I have not been successful. I experience withdrawal symptoms such as headaches from the lack of caffeine and would feel cranky and lost throughout the day without the promise of this sweet reward. I have tried cutting soda out cold turkey as well as weaning off slowly through moderation, but again, neither worked. I was hoping you had some suggestions for me on how to be more successful in my journey to kick my diet soda habit, as well as maybe you could provide some suggestions for healthier alternative options. All right. So um, first, I think we should maybe spend a minute or two talking about why Maddie should kick this habit. Okay. You know, because for, for a lot of people, it's like, okay, it's diet soda, it's liquid, there's no calories. You know, maybe it sounds like this person's drinking some Coke or Diet Pepsi or right, something yeah. with caffeine in it. Yes. Because um, she actually says yeah, she's got problems with the caffeine withdrawal. But let's just talk a little bit, maybe, if you want to mention about sure. like, so what's the problem with diet sodas? Isn't it just another liquid? Okay. I guess the answer is no, Andrea. <laughs> 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 okay. So, the, I mean, there's a lot of issues with diet sodas, you know. So, first of all, um, it's although it is a non-caloric um, compound in there, you know, usually most sodas are sweetened with sucralose. 
right. diet sodas. Which we talked about which, uh, in episode seven when we talked about sugar, sugars, right. the dangers of, sugar. of artificial right. sweeteners. So I want to talk about that just real quick. So the problem becomes is that although it is an artificial sweetener, so first of all, overall, it, it, it increases our craving for things sweet. The other thing, too, is that by itself, it causes insulin release. And since there's no sugar from the soda around, it lowers our blood sugar even more, making us feel after a couple an hour or two, cranky, tired, headachy, and hungry. And then usually people start eating like carbs at that point because they're really so hungry. They're just grabbing something which spikes their blood sugar and off we go again. Right. Yeah. So you do get into, as she described, a very bad cycle with it. What I find interesting is that also it's not like a, a lot of people I know who are drinking sodas or diet sodas. They're not just drinking one eight ounce soda. You can't even you can't even buy an find eight ounce it. soda you practically. Can, you, know, you can find a twelve ounce or big gulps or sixty four ounces. Or, um, yeah, so or, yeah. some some teenage boys are drinking up to two quarts of soda a day. That's that's all the liquid that they're drinking. So that's yes. shocking to me. Nobody to them it's that's their beverage of choice. Right. And, okay, so how to get off of, you know, so this person does realize this is a really bad problem. Right. And we've just talked about why some of these symptoms are there. It's not just, it's not just from the soda per se. There's the caffeine, there's that blood sugar d dysregulation that happens with it. So first of all, I don't think this person can go cold turkey. Cold turkey, would, they could, but it would be very painful and very difficult. Okay. And all of us, you know, that always sounds great, but basically we all need to keep functioning in this world. Right. So going cold turkey is often not, a, you know, a great choice. So unless you have to for health reasons, right? That's second. Right. Yeah. Okay. And it also doesn't stick a lot of times. By the way, you, what you brought up about health reasons is a lot of time people will d finally decide to get off drinking soda because of health reasons. Right. They don't have a choice at that point. They have to cut it out. Right. So... So the best thing, though, is to go little by little. And this person did say they've tried, you know, little by little. But her little by little and my little by little and your little by little might be different. So, you know, what I would say is, you know, start by taking off one soda a day. I, if she's not drinking everything with caffeine in it, she could start with the start with the one that's easiest to get rid of, not the one that's hardest to get rid of, the one that's easiest. So hopefully there might be one in there without caffeine. That might be easier. And then substitute in maybe like sparkling water for that one. Okay. She feels the need for something bubbly, you know. Um, or some, there are some that have like natural flavors in them. Different people like different right. things. Yeah, there are a lot of different soda options now that might be a good way for her to transition from right. drinking Diet Pepsi or Coke or something to right. going to the La Croix or things like that. Right, and there's some that are flavored with stevia, right. which would be better. We mentioned that before. And then the other thing is just to do it slowly, slowly, you know? So let's say she gets down to four a day, and then she's going to three, and at three, that's when she starts having problems. So do three and a half. Mm -hmm. do three and three quarters, do whatever you can decrease it to. And then, you know, hold with that for a couple of days and then go down again. Cause the idea at the end of the day is to get there. And if you take four more weeks to get there, but you really get there for sure, it's better than if you try to do it really quickly and either make it. And you're just like holding, we call it, used to call it white knuckling, mm. you know? Um, and, and then you and then you slip, and then you're done. The other thing too is like, as for any change in our lives, you know, none of us is perfect. We all have our days. So if you're at some place and you slip and you go back, it's not the end of the world. You you know, and it, you can pull yourself together. You can get back on track. You know, and also too, because a lot of times like, somebody could be out, and let's say they're at um, some kind of event or whatever, and they slip. And they have like a Diet Coke, like one um, one glass of it, you know? So kind of let that be. Don't get down on yourself. And just, but also don't say, okay, well, I slipped for today, so I'm just going to let it all go. Right. So just going to go, okay, I slipped for today. I drank this. I'm in the middle of drinking it. So let me enjoy it now. But it doesn't mean I'm going to have three more glasses after this. So I have a question for you because part of her 
uh, question was that she goes through caffeine withdrawal. Uh Uh-huh. Would it be okay for one of those sodas, maybe if she substituted with some coffee or some other right. beverage with caffeine, not loading it up with sugar, you know, not making that into a drink that right. wasn't going to help her? But right. Could she kind of use a different form of caffeine to help move yeah, her along? Yeah, she could. Okay. That would be helpful, you know, um, if she likes it. Right. Because a lot of people who are drinking sodas like this, Right. And they're drinking a lot with caffeine. It's because they don't like coffee so much. But she could also, she could try like uh, um, like a black tea, an iced black tea. There's right. different things she but could try. But we don't want to add a lot to the tea either because then that no. turns that from something healthy to something not so healthy. No. So let's just review. So soft drinking ingredients, which we call soda um, liquid candy. There's high fructose corn syrup, again, right. which we spoke about in the sugar episode, right. aspartame, right. Uh, there's caffeine, right. there's phosphoric acid, which, which contributes to calcium loss, right. which is very important for women, um, citric acid, which could contain MSG, artificial flavors, and then water, again, we don't know if the water is good quality water or not that they're right. using. So um, try and stay away from this witch's brew right as we call it of soft drinks and um you know try and start substituting something bubbly something with caffeine something with fruit infused right um all better options right so all right andrea excellent choices q okay and that is it for this episode of let my people eat please visit our website at letmypeopleeat.com and leave us a comment get in touch with our email at podcast at letmypeopleeat.com or call us at 317-659-0004. Post on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook with the hashtag letmypeopleeatpodcast. If you like this show, please make sure to leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Tell your friends and family and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. And please remember that although we are certified professionals, This is not a medical advice podcast. No content, posts, or comments should be interpreted as professional guidance. Always speak to your own health practitioner about making the right life changes for you. Until next time, I am Jill Sharfman. And I am Andrea Moskowitz. Thanks for joining us. And go in good health.